Jellyfin is a free software media system designed to manage and stream media content. It's an alternative to proprietary platforms like MB and Plex, allowing users to maintain full control over their media collections without the need for premium subscriptions or hidden features. Jellyfin is completely free and open source and is also cross-platform, working on Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. Users can stream various types of media, including movies, TV shows, music, etc., across devices. The platform supports common file formats such as H.264 for video and MP3 for audio. I've used Jellyfin for two or three years now. I originally used Plex, but they got all weird with mandatory account creation and so on, so I hopped over pretty seamlessly to Jellyfin. My use case is simple. I want to be able to access my own media from different devices within our home. I'm not accessing anything from the internet or otherwise sharing my content, so that's not a requirement, although you can do that with Jellyfin and also with Plex, etc. This will not be a step-by-step -step tutorial for installing Jellyfin, but of course I will link to several of those in the video description below if you're interested. I will give a general overview of how it is set up and operates, and point out a couple of things I recently came across myself, which may in turn help someone else. Jellyfin is quite capable of working on lower-powered computers, and my current setup works on a used Dell small form factor PC with an 8th gen Intel processor and 16 gigs of RAM, although 8 gigs would probably be fine. One thing I did find out is that the Intel integrated graphics are quite good for transcoding, meaning the ability to convert one format to another in order to stream it effectively. Intel's Quick Sync Video QSV is pretty well regarded as a superior option for hardware transcoding in both Jellyfin and Plex. I feel my current setup is an improvement over my past hardware, which was an older AMD-powered small form factor PC with an AMD APU. I replaced the 256 gig NVMe drive that came with the current PC with a 2 terabyte drive, which is plenty for my needs. I've been running on a 1 terabyte drive for a few years without any concerns over storage. I used Windows on my previous media server computer, as it is stupidly simple to set up. I had tried Linux in the past, but it seemed more complicated than it needed to be at the time, so I chickened out and stuck with Windows. This time, in the interest of learning new stuff, I put on my big boy pants and went with Linux Mint, running XFCE, one of the more lightweight desktop environments. Yes, I realize Jellyfin can be run from the command line and an SSH connection but I wanted GUI access for various reasons. I feel that Linux gives a good foundation with less resource use, even with a desktop environment. To install Jellyfin server on Linux Mint, follow these steps. Open the Software Manager in Linux Mint by going to Admin, Software Manager. Search for Jellyfin in the Software Manager. Look for the Jellyfin server package from Flathub, which is typically one of the top results. Click on the Jellyfin server package and select Install. That's it, basically. This method is the simplest way to install Jellyfin on Linux Mint, as it avoids potential dependency issues and complex command line instructions. You can use things like Docker for your Jellyfin instance, but that seems like overkill to me. I just want to run a simple server on a basic PC. After installation, you can access Jellyfin on your media server PC by opening a web browser and navigating to localhost port 8096, which is the default location for the web server. At this point, you will create a local account, which allows you to administer the Jellyfin server. You'll then be guided through configuring your media libraries and adjusting settings according to your preferences once the installation is complete. You essentially tell the server where your media is or will be, on the computer and Jellyfin will scan the location and try to identify the media. It can use internet resources to pull in DVDs, CD, or album covers so that your collection looks neat and accessible. In Linux, the Jellyfin user can't access a computer user's home folder, which I realize now was the cause of my difficulty when I previously attempted to use Jellyfin on Linux. 
I don't like mucking around with file or folder permissions on any operating system, so an easy way to get around this is to create your media folders under the existing slash media folder on the Linux file system and point Jellyfin to those. Because of the way I'm connecting to the media server PC, if I copy or move files to that location, I need to use sudo. You may not need to, but it's straightforward enough in either case. I just copied my personal movies and so on from my external SSD drive to the slash media folder. Jellyfin will rescan the library locations when it detects a new or changed file and update the menu system accordingly. To actually use Jellyfin, you can connect to your media server from your network via the computer's IP address and the port, in this case, port 8096. You can do this either from a web browser or the Jellyfin app, which is available for many streaming devices as well as phones and tablets. The first time you connect, you will be prompted for the username and password you set up initially, and you should be presented with a menu which looks much like any other streaming app. There are settings you can tweak to get the most consistent performance, but the defaults work well for most situations. Again, that's not what this video is specifically about, but I will leave links in the video description below. Jellyfin is a nice way to easily access your media collection from another room or from the backyard if your Wi-Fi reaches out there. It looks quite slick and is pretty regularly updated. So I hope this might inspire some of you to grab an old PC and try using Jellyfin. I want to thank you for watching and hopefully we'll see you again soon. Take care and don't forget to like and subscribe.